There is another concept called semaphore. Semaphore is another tool. The semaphores are signaling methods which are used in railways. We have adopted this name for our context and uh, in this context, semaphore is something which uses two function calls. One is called wait, the other is called signal and uh, wait is used in the entry section for the critical section and signal is used for the exit section of the critical section also called P and V. So first what we're going to do, we're going to define instead of a lock, we're going to define a variable S, which will be the semaphore S, which can have different values. There, there can be different initial values. For example, it has an initial value one. So uh, representing the number of resources, by the way. So uh, weight on S means that uh, whenever a function is trying to, a process is trying to go into the critical section, it calls the weight function weight on S and it checks whether the value of s is less than or equal to zero if the value is zero or less than zero it waits but since the value right now is the initial value is one and this is the first process which has called the wait to go into the critical section it is not going to busy wait here because the value is greater than one it is going the while loop will be broken and it goes to this point and it decrements the value so now the first process which called the wait function makes the value of s what zero and it goes into the critical section and when it comes out of the critical section it signals on the same variable so while coming out of the critical section it increases the value to one but as long as it was in its critical section and the value of semaphore was zero if a second process came and called the wait function to enter the critical section the second process will have to wait at this point because the value is zero, the value of semaphore is zero for the second process and this is the second process is going to keep spinning into this uh, waiting loop and that's why we call this function wait and that's how the process waits for the first process to finish its critical section. So these are semaphores. Semaphores are also good for multiple uh, resources. If we initialize semaphore with for example three and the first process calls the wait function the first process is going to check the value for being equal to or less than equal to zero or equal to zero but that is false so it is not going to wait so let me write it here process one comes over here calls the wait function and checks the value for zero the value is positive so it goes into the critical section it doesn't wait here the first process and makes the value of semaphore less by one so the value is now semaphore value is the second process comes and checks the value. The value of semaphore is two. It doesn't wait, goes into the critical section and makes the value of semaphore one. The third process comes, checks the value of semaphore for zero and it is greater than zero, it is one. So it goes into the critical section, but before going into the critical section, decrements the value and the value becomes zero. Now there's another process, P4, it comes but now p4 is going to see the value 0 so p4 is going to wait and similarly if there was p5 p6 and any other processes they are all going to wait for at least one of the so for example this process comes out p2 comes out of the critical section it increments the value so now semaphore value becomes from 0 to because the last value was 0 now semaphore value becomes 1 and it makes room for another process to come into the critical section so now p4 weight can become over and p4 can be allowed to go into the critical section so this these were semaphores and these are by the way called uh, counting semaphores and there are some binary semaphores if the initial value is one then this is called binary semaphore this is just like mutex lock but if the initial value is greater than one in this as in this case three it is called counting semaphore Counting semaphores can be used for situations where you have multiple resources and you want to allow multiple processes to go into their critical sections. This is another ex example of, a, of two processes which are trying to use the semaphore for synchronization amongst themselves. So we have two processes, one is called P1 and the other one is called P2 and there are two lines. One, The first line is called S1, it is in process P1, the second line is called S2 it is in process P2 and what our requirement is that S1 should execute before S2. So in this picture you can see that S1 is actually if this is the timeline so for example there is time 0 
and this is let's say time 10 this is time 11 and we are happy because s1 should be executed before s2 and this is the synchronization problem but there's another scenario that the process p1 the line in process p1 which is s1 let's say it's here it comes after s2 so here it was s2 this is process p2 s2 and this is for example timeline this is time 0 this is time uh, let's say 20 this is time 10 so we're not happy because we wanted s1 to execute before s2 but this is not happening here so what we do is so we define uh, a semaphore the semaphore is called s and we or let's say sync and we initialize the value of sync to 0 and we write in front of s we write signal signal sync and here we write uh, at line s2 we write wait on sync so as the name suggests if this line comes before this line s2 comes before s1 and sync is 0 the wait function is going to force this process to wait on this line because the resource is 0 the semaphore is as, uh, right now has the value 0 so process p2 is going to wait at this line so how long it is going to wait it is going to wait up to this line for example this is second number 21 before second number 21 at second number 20 the process p1 is signaling or in other words incrementing the value of semaphore sync to 1 so now sync value becomes 1 so at second number 21 process p2 sees the value of sync 1 as equal to 1 and it comes out of its waiting state at second number 21 s2 line is going to be executed after uh, second number 21 s2 waited up to this point and at this point when s2 executed the uh, process p2 will go further so this uh, the size of the uh, process in terms of timeline increased and this is the waiting time for p2 so, so this is one example of using the semaphores for uh, synchronization of two processes and uh, semaphores can be implemented in a slightly different way where we uh, so you see that whenever the wait system call is going to be used the wait uh, function sorry the wait function call is going to be used as long as one or multiple processes wait for the semaphore to become available to have a positive value they are going to keep on spinning in this loop indefinitely uh, so this was one usage of semaphore so semaphores can uh, ha semaphores have an inherent problem and that problem is that whenever multiple processes are waiting for uh, you know uh, going into the critical section they keep on spinning into this loop and they can be one or two or multiple processes which are all trying to get into the critical section so we want and th what this does to the system overall is that whenever a process is given a chance to uh, go into the critical section it waits into this uh, and it doesn't get the chance it waits into this loop and every time the operating system gives that process a chance to go into the CPU it goes into the CPU and simply uh, executes this loop which is doing nothing it all is it's doing is uh, wait uh, making the process wait for the critical section to become available so instead what we've done is the operating system offers two system calls one is called block another is called wake up so you you should remember that the uh, when an io occurs a process goal goes into a kind of a sleep mode where the process does not utilize the cpu cycle it simply waits for the io operation to complete and uh, uh, it doesn't uh, waste any cpu cycles so this is exactly what is being done here but this is different from that IO of, uh, waiting state that the process is now itself saying that I want to go into a sleep mode because I want to wait for something else to happen so like a critical section to become available 
I'm waiting into my uh, you know uh, entry section of the critical section. So the process declares itself to be waiting and asks the operating system to push itself into a waiting mode or a waiting state using the block system call. And whenever the a process comes out of a critical section, it wakes up another a different uh, process which is trying to go into it, its critical section. So this this is how the processes, if there is one or multiple processes, they're trying to go into the critical section and trying to wait on a resource or a lock to become available. They don't need to waste CPU cycle. They can simply, uh, you know, go into a wait state where the operating system will not send that process into CPU. That process will not be sent into the CPU. So this is what is happening here. The wait system call, what it does, whenever a process tries to go into the critical section, it waits on the semaphore. Right away, it decrements the value of S beforehand. So if the value of S is less than zero, which is negative, the process is added to a waiting list, all the processes which are waiting for the semaphore to become available and it is forcing itself into the locked, uh, you know, blocked state. Or the process is saying that I don't want to waste CPU cycles. I want to go into the critical section, but the critical section is not available because this condition is true. So if the value is negative, it says that, okay, the, the critical section is not available. So I don't want to waste CPU cycle. Please push me into a waiting mode or waiting state. But uh, while doing that, add me to a list so that another process which is coming out of its critical section, which is leaving its critical section, should uh, first increment the semaphore value and then check whether the semaphore value by incrementing has become zero or greater than zero. You know, that means the resources have become available because, uh, you know, there could be multiple processes which were waiting in, in this wait state. So as soon as a resource becomes available, the process which is coming out of the critical section says that remove a process P from this list. So which the list that we created earlier and we added every process which was waiting on the semaphore. One process out of that list is woken up using wake up system call by a process which is coming out of its critical section. And this is how, uh, this is the mechanism which prevents the processes to eat up or to waste CPU cycles. And this is called implementation of semaphore with no busy waiting or no spin lock.